If you're a Photoshop user, I have some good news for you. Have a look at this photo. Tons of reflections completely ruined. All you have to do is to go to filter and then camera raw filter. Keep in mind, this is a JPEG photo and this is the regular version of Photoshop, not the beta. All you need to do is to go to the remove section, scroll down, you will find reflections, open that up and click on apply. That's it. Wait for it. And have a look at it. Absolutely gone. Here is the before. If you take the slider to the left, here's the before. And here is the after. That is crazy. But there's a problem. If you zoom in, the quality is not that high. So just change the quality from preview to best. That's it. It's going to take a little more time. But just have a look at the result. It's a night and day difference. You can actually make out the street marks and the dividers right there. Earlier, this feature was on tech preview and only used to work with raw photos. But right now, it works with JPEGs too. And here's the crazy part. If you take the slider to the left, of course, you get the reflections back. But if you take it all the way to the left, you see only the reflections. That's crazy. And you can see my legs right there. So the first new feature is reflection removal has made it to the main version of Photoshop and now it works with JPEGs as well. Earlier, it only used to work with raw photos. Photoshop is definitely stepping up. And in this video, we're going to discover 10 new steps or features with the May and June update of Photoshop 2025. Keep in mind, this is for the main version, not the beta. And with one out of the way, Let's go through the nine remaining ones. I have some more good news for you. Let's say you wanted to remove all of these distracting people. We know that we can easily do that with the remove tool, but this feature has now made it to camera and there's an advantage. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters out of good practice so that we can always revert back or change stuff. Let's go to filter again and then camera raw filter. And inside of that in the same remove section, if you scroll down, you will find people. Just open that up and Photoshop automatically detects all the people and let's remove them by clicking on remove. Now here's the great part. It used generative AI to remove all of it, but it would not count against your credits if you use this particular feature. And that's crazy. Now, if you don't like a particular removal section, for example, let's say you didn't like this area, let's click on it to activate it, scroll down. You have several options. Here's the first one, here's the second, here's the third. Right now you don't get that with the remove tool. Let's take a look at this area. If you don't like this, click here. First one, second, third. If you still don't like it, you can click on generate one more time. And if I were to show you my Adobe account, have a look, all of my credits are still remaining. And I've already used this feature a bunch of times. Keep in mind, all of these points are a generation each. But I don't like this area, so let's try a couple of other options. Have a look, that is gone too. Once you're happy with it, hit OK and it's gone. Another big news is Photoshop now supports JPEG, Excel, and AVIF formats. These are formats for good compression and they are considered to be better than JPEG. Let's take a look. This, my friend, is a lossless PNG file. In other words, this photo has not been compressed. It has all the details intact. And as a result, the size of this is around 40 MB. Huge. Now, with this new update, you can not only open JPEG, Excel, and AVIF files, but also export in those formats. So let's go to File, Save a Copy, and first we're going to try the JPEG, Excel format. Let's choose JPEG, Excel, name this file JPEG, Excel, and click on Save. Now, a new dialog box will show up. Here, let's choose Lossy because that is the advantage with JPEG, Excel. Quality, leave it at 68. For keeping the file size comparable, we're going to get to that later. And all of the settings at default. Hit OK. And now if you have a look at the JPEG Excel file size, look, it's only 2.6 MB. We could go even lower, but wait for it. Let's go to file again, save a copy. And this time, let us choose AVIF. Let's name this AVIF as well. Click on save. And this time, let's leave it 50, medium. Let's keep it the way it is. Speed slowest so that we can get the highest efficiency. Hit OK. Now I chose different values for JPEG Excel and AVIF to keep the file size comparable. Now I'm also going to export a regular JPEG version to compare the efficiency with the rest. So here, let us choose the regular JPEG. Let's name this JPEG. Click on save. To keep the file size similar, let's decrease the quality to 4. And still the JPEG is the highest size here. So here's the JPEG with 3 MB. JPEG Excel 2.6, AVIF 2.9. Keeping all of them side by side, let's zoom in. Here's the original one, zoomed in at 600%, absolutely pristine. And here you have the JPEG, the quality is absolutely gone, all that blockiness, blotchiness, artifacts, everything there. Compare it with JPEG Excel. Keep in mind, JPEG Excel was much smaller at 2.6, JPEG was 3 the largest of all compressed formats. And yet this has more detail than the JPEG. AVIF is also very much comparable. It was at 2.9, but both of them 
are so much better than the regular JPEG. Keep in mind these are new formats and not yet fully universally supported as the OG JPEG. Before we head over to the next new feature, I have a very, very special announcement. I'm bringing back my most hands-on Photoshop workshop. Two full days in person, you bring your laptop with Photoshop and I'll bring everything you need. Files, challenges, creative projects, and together we'll create stunning Photoshop work step by step while truly learning by doing. This isn't a demo like watching an online video. It's a classroom style guided experience and every minute is about you creating with clarity and zero confusion. On day one, we'll start from zero. Build a rock solid foundation so you're never lost in Photoshop and master the concept so you always have an idea of what to do without ever memorizing the steps. And on day two, we'll dive into advanced techniques that actually make your work stand out, like professional retouching, color grading, compositing, and proper use of AI to make your workflow 10x faster or even more. It's happening in Rockland, California on September 12th and 13th, and on September 14th and 15th, it's happening in Portland, Oregon. Since it's a guided class, seats are limited and you can register using the link right here or in the description. Keep in mind, you never need to memorize Photoshop. We just need to understand it. Back to the video. The next new feature is an early access, but it's pretty darn cool, especially if you deal with colors. Have a look at this photo. What do you see? These circles have very similar tones, right? Even the background has a very similar tone. Now, if we go to filter and then camera raw filter, it is inside of camera raw. Let's scroll down and go to color mixer inside of that, open a point color and let's pick any one of these colors with the eyedropper. Click on the eyedropper and let's pick this particular color. All of these colors are now targeted. If you change the hue and the saturation, all of them change, right? Pretty standard. But here's what's crazy. Have a look at this new slider called variance. And what does it do? It increases or decreases the difference between these colors or the variety in other words. So if you take it to the right, the colors become more and more different. And if you take it to the left, the colors become more and more similar. That's all there is to it. And this has a wide variety of use cases. Let's say you want to equalize the skin tones, fix the redness, couple areas are desaturated. Just simply go to filter, camera raw filter. You can also apply it as a mask. If you go to the masking section and let us select this particular person. And for this person, we're going to select facial skin and body skin. Click on create. It automatically creates that mask for you. Scroll down and here as well, you will find point color. Let's pick the eyedropper, pick a good skin tone area and that's it. Scroll down, just decrease the variance and you have that issue fixed. By the way, just to see which areas are being affected, you can try increasing the hue and the saturation all the way to the right. Have a look, these areas are not being targeted. So you need to scroll down and maybe increase the hue a little bit more to the left and the saturation range as well, so that we include a lot of those areas. You can also try increasing the range too. Let's scroll down. You can also try the luminance range to make sure all of those areas are included. Now let's go up, double click on hue and saturation slider to bring it to zero. And now let's take the variance to the left. Have a look, all of that redness gone. This is so darn cool. On top of that, you can play with the hue. Let's keep it like this. You can increase the saturation slightly. You can also play with the luminance, make the skin brighter or darker. That's up to you. So I'm going to leave it at that. Hit OK. And so easily we have equalized the entire skin. Here's the before. Some areas are a little reddish. Some areas are not saturated. If you turn it on, everything is equalized. But this might be too much. You may want to decrease the opacity to about 60%. And that looks way more natural. Similarly, we can use this to enhance colors as well. Have a look at this landscape. If you go to filter, camera raw filter, and let's go to color mixer here, open a point color, and let's pick one of these greens, okay? And then if we increase the variance, have a look. Now, look at these shades, these yellow ochre, green, they just become so much better. And on top of that, you can increase the saturation to boost it even more. And oh my gosh, the yellow that you see here, it was not there before. It was all green. Here's the after. You see all that variety now. Huge shout out to Glyn Dewis. I watched his video and learned more about variants. So if you want to learn about variants in depth, definitely recommend watching his video. The next new feature is something that was already there in the beta version and was loved by all. And now it is in the main version. Super cool, super safe. Let's say you wanted the photography to be aligned with the landscape text. Earlier, you would have to either have them in separate layers or select just the photography, decrease the size, open up the character panel, decrease the distance. And if you wanted to change something, you cannot. You have to resize and adjust everything all over again. Instead of doing all of that, we have this new feature called dynamic text. All you have to do is to select it, select the text by double clicking on the T and then just activate this T with a Thunderbolt icon. There you go. It's all aligned. And now you can just 
resize it accordingly according to whatever you wish and as you type it adjusts accordingly so if i were to do something like this see so good so in here i'm going to type nature I'm going to go to the next line and type in photography. See, no matter what you do, it's all aligned so darn nicely. Let's go to the move tool. Let's keep it in the center. By the way, while we're at it, let's do an effect. Change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And there you go. It already looks fantastic. Now, let me share with you something fun. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I know I should have converted this into a smart object, but yeah, we're going to do it fast right now. 74 blur. Okay. And now hold the Ctrl or Command click on the thumbnail of the text layer to make a selection of that and with this blurred layer selected click on the mask button and only those areas are blurred and this creates for a nice effect the next new feature is so revolutionary that when it was in beta i used to use photoshop beta just for that feature and then come back to the regular version of photoshop for stability and that is none other than the brand new select subject now just to compare i'm going to open an older version of photoshop which is 2024 and we are going to try to click on select subjects see what it does as you can see the selection is absolutely horrendous it missed out so many parts so many parts of the cycle the subject the leg everything this is just crappy on another level but back in those days which was just a year ago this was revolutionary now let's have a look at the new version keep in mind you need to turn on cloud select subject by going to photoshop 2025 settings image processing you want to make sure cloud is selected and again no credits will be charged for this at least as of now if you click on select subject it is going to take a while but just have a look at the result this is insane on another level have a look at this every spoke is being targeted and if i were to create a mask out of this see this is something else even the hair it did leave out certain areas it is not absolutely perfect but have a look at the spokes have a look at all of the details this is crazy crazy good now if you want to skip all of that process of making a selection and creating a mask you have a direct shortcut here which is remove background i've already created a white background if you click on remove background it's automatically going to create a selection and then mask it out for you and as you can see it's crazy good now on the technical side a little more technical feature if you go to filter and then camera or filter let's say we went to the masking section we selected the background and just made the background darker by decreasing the exposure now we wanted to remove the reflection so we went to the remove section scroll down clicked on reflection and apply gone pretty amazing if you look at the quality it is not as good so scroll down again choose the quality to be the best we should have already selected best but no worries much better quality now notice this yellow button here it is asking you to update your ai adjustments if i open this up you will notice that since we have made some distraction removal where we remove the reflections we need to update the masks and this makes sense because there might be certain changes here and there and we used ai masking for the background so simply click on this or click on update all to update it all and it should be fine just a setting that we should know about again if we were to change the reflection amount this will again become yellow so every time you don't have to open it click on this button or click on update all no all you have to do is to just hold the shift key and click on it that's a shortcut it also does the same thing now the ai denoise in camera raw has been just incredible one of the best in my opinion if you just zoom in by the way thanks to kaylee greer world famous dog photographer and cat photographer as well for this particular photo if you notice there's a lot of noise and especially that happened because we increased the exposure if we scroll down go to the details section we will see denoise in a checkbox now in the earlier versions you would have to go to a brand new window apply denoise it would make a copy of the file make things very complicated and with this update you can use features like denoise super resolution without creating a new file and in the same window so if i were to check denoise it will take a little while but it's worth the wait have a look at it this is crazy noise removal let's increase it slightly to make it absolutely clean and you don't have to go to a new window or create a separate raw file for it similarly if you are not applying denoise you can also apply super resolution it is supposed to increase the resolution and again you can do it in the same window for this example i'm just going to apply denoise and it works really really great keep in mind this is a large photo i zoomed in too much the next new feature is adjust colors major change to the hue saturation adjustment we have made a detailed video about it it was already in the beta it is just that now it is in the main version makes stuff so much more simpler if you're not able to see the contextual taskbar just a right click outside the canvas click on show contextual taskbar and click on adjust colors it automatically analyzes the image and gives you colors from this particular image and it changes from image to image and let's pick a color closest to the hoodie 
and you can change it to what ever you wish this is insane so i'm gonna make it black you can make it white but this is not fully selecting it so let's try another color maybe this one this is fully selecting it here's black here's white you can change the hue to whatever you wish so i'm gonna make it white like this and this looks fantastic earlier we would have to play with the ranges to make it more accurate but right now it is just direct it gives you colors based on the image and whatever changes you have made here it creates a hue saturation adjustment layer you can double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer and see all the changes that has been made and you can of course go more detailed include more colors that is up to you. And for the final feature that made it out of the beta to the main version is select people. If you select the object selection tool, you'll see a new button at the top called select people. Click on that and it right now is detecting people and you can select the entirety of any one of these people here or you can select all the people by clicking on this button. Now here's where it gets interesting. Let's say you wanted to select the facial skin of all the people, activate that and upper body skin as well. Click on apply. Now the facial skin and the upper body skin of all the people is selected. You could have also included arms, but I forgot about that. But let's say it's all selected now. I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer, make it slightly brighter and airy. And now the attention goes more towards the face. Now say I wanted to select her jeans, I can just click there or go to select people, go to this person. You wanna select the lower clothes. You can also select multiple things and click on apply. There we have it. Create another curves adjustment layer and just make it darker to match with the rest of the people here. Makes things so much quicker, but just keep one thing in mind. You need to make sure that sample all layers is checked. If it's unchecked, it's not going to detect anything because it's not sampling the layers beneath it. If you go to select people right now, it will say no people found. So you make sure that sample all layers is checked. Then if you go to select people, everything comes back. So there you go, my friend. 10 new updates to the brand new Photoshop. Which one was your favorite? Was it the reflection removal now that it also works with JPEGs? Or was it still the select subject and remove background with the brand new cloud selection? Let us talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?